Well, what do you know? Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Frey followed suit this week with Governor Tim Walls by vetoing another progressive rideshare bill. What will it take to get one of these bills to pass? So here in Minnesota, we're trying to get similar protections and pricing as Washington State. Um, a few years ago, Seattle approved a very progressive bill for rideshare drivers, which included higher pay and also protections. And those that higher pay and protections has spread to the entire state of Washington now. And here in Minnesota, we're trying to get similar pricing and protections in place. Earlier this year, a similar bill passed both the Minnesota House and Senate. The bill included rates of $1.45 per mile and $0.34 cents per minute and a minimum fare of $5 for rides that start in the Twin Cities metro area and $1.25 per mile for trips that started outside the metro. Uber and Lyft then went on a campaign threatening to leave the state, sending messages to riders and drivers. And when the bill arrived at the desk of Governor Waltz, he vetoed it, his first veto in his four-year tenure as governor. So the legislature did all the work to get the bill passed, and then when it arrived at the governor's desk, he vetoed it because of pressure from Uber and Lyft, threatening to leave the state. And plain and simple, these are only tactics. They will not leave the state. They will raise prices and passengers will foot that bill, but they will not leave the state. So then the next step here in Minnesota, the city of Minneapolis passed another progressive bill recently. The bill included rates of $1.40 per mile and 51 cents per minute, and again, a minimum fare of $5 within the city of Minneapolis. It then went to Mayor Frey's desk and he vetoed it just like Walls had previously. And this isn't the end of that Minneapolis bill. There is still hope. There is one last chance for the council to override the veto. If nine yay votes, there's 13 members. If nine of them, two thirds vote yay, then this bill will be passed and the veto will be overridden. Again, the threats from Uber and Lyft got to both Walls and Frey. They had no backbone in these situations. Walls and Frey both have talked about committees and needing more time to iron out the details of these bills as if the legislators that proposed and got these bills passed hadn't put in all of that work already. And one of the main tactics that Uber and Lyft used were that riders were not gonna be able to afford these new prices. If passengers can't afford to use rideshare, they need to utilize other forms of transportation like public transit. So we'll see what happens on September 7th in Minneapolis here, but in my opinion, these rates and these protections will eventually pass nationwide. The fire that started in Seattle, the small fire that started in Seattle and spread to Washington state, and we're trying to spread it here in Minnesota, this is going to be inevitable. Uber and Lyft are fighting a losing battle and threatening to leave is a bullshit tactic. They're not gonna leave. What's gonna happen is the rates will get passed just like what happened in Seattle. The prices will go up, passengers will foot the bill. Yes, ride requests may decrease in the short term after these rates are passed. But drivers are going to be getting paid so much better that it shouldn't matter. We're getting paid more for our time. And over the long term, as they always have in rideshare, things will even out. But what do all of you think? What do you think of our leaders here in Minnesota not having the spine to pass some of these bills? Leave a comment below and let us know. Again, we'll see what happens on September 7th here, and I'll be back with an update video after that vote. Uh, thanks again for watching, and drive safe. Thanks.